This is a Fox News alert, a bipartisan budget deal on Capitol Hill. House Budget Committee Chair Paul Ryan and Senate Budget Committee Chair Senator Patty Murray hammering out the agreement. Congressman Paul Ryan, Price. nice to see you, sir. Hey, good, be, good to be back with you, Greta. Well, so you must be happy tonight. You've uh, hammered out this deal with Senator Murray. I am. I am, because it's a deal that moves the ball in the right direction. Uh, it cuts the deficit without raising taxes by cutting spending in smarter ways than the across-the-board approach. Uh, a lot of our members were worried about all the defense cuts. Uh, we're stopping the military from getting cutting further, and we're cutting spending in smarter ways on autopilot programs that have been untouched for years by Congress. And we're doing it in a way to make sure that there's no tax increases and that we actually lower the deficit versus doing nothing. So if you take a look at, you want me to walk you yeah, through it yeah, a little bit? I'm happy it. to do that. If you take a look at this chart, this shows you what we call discretionary spending, spending on government agency budgets. The blue line on the top here shows you the agreement we had a year ago under the Budget Control Act. The sequester is the red line. That ended up cutting spending. What this green area does is it reflects what we're doing, which is by preventing the military from getting cut any further, we're putting a little bit of money back in the sequester here, and we're paying for it by cutting spending in other areas of government. For instance, we're asking public employees to pay a little bit more uh, for their pensions. Uh, our argument is that hardworking taxpayers pay for their pensions in the first place, and their benefits are, on average, better than the taxpayers who pay for them in the first place. So we've got a number of reforms that are permanent, that actually save more money, and pay for some relief of the sequester. We also see that this puts us in the right direction because the numbers down here, uh, a year ago when I was passing a budget in the House, we were hoping for a, a trillion, $19 billion in total discretionary spending. We won't hit that spending level until the year 2017 with this agreement. So we're well ahead of schedule, and we're getting more deficit reduction and spending cuts in areas that we've never been able to get before. That's why I think this is a good agreement, uh, and it makes divided government work, and it prevents government shutdowns, which we think is a good idea as well. All right. Well, well I, I should tell you, I love the fact that any deal that's bipartisan in the city is like a really good sign. I like the fact that it's two years so that there's some level of certainty right. for the business community, because that's what's been so painful, these continued resolutions, no one ever knowing what was going to happen, so it could make business decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, other than the take, asking the federal workers to pay a little more in their pensions, oh, we're Things. Where else are you getting the money? There's a lot of things. Um, we're, in, we're opening up a little bit of the Gulf of Mexico for oil and gas drilling. Uh, 172 million barrels of oil, 302 billion cubic feet of natural gas in an area that had been closed off now is going to be opened up. Um, we're saying that, that deadbeat dads who don't pay for their kids' Medicaid payments need to pay for them. Uh, we're making sure that we don't send prisoners um, checks from the IRS in prison that they shouldn't be getting. Hallelujah. Um, we're making <laughs> sure that people can't rip off dead people's identity so that they don't keep getting checks from the federal government after they've passed away to go to somebody else. There's a lot of fraud, waste. We also go after corporate welfare. There's a government um, research and development program for energy companies that is subsidizing with private taxpayer, with public taxpayer dollars, I mean, public spending for private taxpayer dollars. The point I'm trying to say is hardworking taxpayers should not be subsidizing the research and development costs for private energy companies. That's a program we get right. rid of. If so there's Pat a lot of things like that. If Senator Patty Murray was sitting right here and I said, what did you get for your side? What would she say? What would she say she was happiest about? Stop government shutdowns and have the Congress actually appropriate money and don't do continuing resolutions anymore. Uh, some well, relief from that's the sequester. That, you like that, too, though. Yeah, she it? wanted but relief I mean, from the sequester. Uh, there are those of us who you wanted relief from the sequester. I wanted relief from the sequester as long as we paid for it, and we paid for it with more deficit reduction. I didn't want it to net out to zero. I wanted whatever we did, I wanted to make sure it was a step in the right direction toward fiscal conservatism, toward deficit reduction. Um, she wanted relief in the sequester. That's where we were able to find common ground. The way we decided to do these negotiations was I had core principles that I was not going to compromise. I'm not going to raise taxes and I'm going to lower the deficit. She had some core principles that she wasn't going to compromise. Like well, she wanted some relief from the sequester. She wanted 50 percent back to go to domestic spending, 50 percent to go back to defense spending. So did she get that? She did get that. And so what we did was we found where is common ground. We looked at our budget that we passed in the House, her budget that she passed for the first time in three years in the Senate, the president's budget. We looked at those areas of common ground, common understanding. We negotiated that, and that's what this result is. It, so the way I look at this is you don't have to require the other person to violate a core principle to get things done. You have common ground. Now, this isn't the greatest agreement of all time um, because we have a long ways to go to get this deficit under control. 
but this is a step in the right direction. Right, but this has nothing to do with obviously with tax reform, right? No, this okay. isn't. This so doesn't, doesn't deal with taxes. It only deals yeah. with the whole budget. All right. Yeah. One of the things that the Democrats want was to extend unemployment benefits. We didn't and, do that. All right. No, so there are a number of things they asked for that we wouldn't agree to, and that's one of them. Did you ask for anything that they didn't agree to? Yeah, I wanted to means test Medicare benefits. I wanted to uh, have uh, higher income seniors pay more of their premiums for Medicare. Uh, they didn't. They would not agree to that. Oh. Uh, have you spoken to Speaker Boehner? Has he been part of mm -hmm. this all along? I have. Yeah. yeah, he's been part of this. Our leadership team, I've spoken to dozens of my colleagues in the House, uh, talking to them, getting their ideas, uh, getting input, uh, speaking with a lot of members of the Senate. Uh, Patty Murray's done the same thing as well, um, trying to get input from our colleagues. Look, we haven't had a bipartisan budget agreement where both houses are controlled by different parties like this since 1986. So putting something like this together is not easy to do. It, it allows some give and take. As far as I'm concerned, I think this is a step in the right direction. It advances our principles of fiscal conservatism. More importantly, it stops the government from shutting down in January, and it stops the government from possibly shutting down in October. Does it have and we think government shutdowns are not in our interest. Oh. I think some people would like to see the political distraction of a government shutdown. Uh, we would like to focus on doing oversight of the executive branch, Does oversight on Obamacare, oversight on the IRS, and not focus on these government shutdowns. Does this have any impact at all, directly or indirectly, on the fact that we're likely hit the debt ceiling sometime in the spring? This does not deal with it. It th doesn't that touch issue. it. This does not way. touch the debt ceiling, just like this doesn't touch taxes or tax reform. By limiting it in scope to spending in deficits, we're able to get this kind of an agreement. All right. Um, in terms of uh, getting it passed in the House, you're going to—I I suspect you're going to need some Republic. I mean, some Correct. Democrats. It's a bipartisan and, agreement, so right. we we anticipate that as well. We anticipate. But I mean, you're going to lose Republicans. We, we in the anticipate. House. I anticipate that some people uh, will not vote for it for various reasons. Uh, but as far as a conservative Republican principle is concerned, we are lowering the deficit without raising taxes by cutting spending in smarter ways. We have permanent spending cuts to pay for some temporary sequester relief. We're not turning the sequester off. We're just giving a little bit of short-term relief for the sequester and keeping it. So I think, as far as conservatism is concerned, we're advancing the ball. The problem is we didn't get everything we want. Well, that's why we you're going to... I didn't you're pass gonna, my budget. My budget balances the budget within 10 years and pays off the debt. That's well, my goal, and that's what I want to achieve. But I know with this divided government, I can't get that. Uh, so I want to get this. All right. So you're going to lose some Republicans in the House. You're going to pick up some Democrats. And that's why I asked about the issue about extending the... Um, uh, unemployment, yeah. because that would have been a way to pick them up. It is, but it's something that we weren't prepared to do. Uh, Democrats weren't interested in paying for it. That cost 20 to $25 billion. We also think um, there's a big economic case to make with the fact that long-term unemployment is propped up. People are more induced to staying long-term unemployed, and that's what a lot of the studies are uh, show us by extending uh, this emergency, uh, which was it was emergency unemployment insurance from 2008. Your press conference ended, I think, about, I don't know, about 620 or 625. I don't know what it is, but at 633, uh, Senator Marco Rubio, Republican in the Senate, uh, had already issued his uh, press release to everybody in the media saying he was opposed. Well, well, I haven't talked to Marco about it. I don't know that he's seen the contents of it. Um, I do expect some people may, may vote against him for their various political reasons. He has his reasons. Um, in the minority, you don't have to pass things. Uh, that's a luxury or, or not that, this, that people have in the Senate. Um, Marco's a very good friend of mine. I'm a big fan of his. Um, I, I wish he'd support it, but if he doesn't, that's fine. Um, for me, I'm cutting the deficit without raising taxes, and I'm getting permanent spending cuts from an area of spending that we haven't been able to touch for years. I think that's a good step in the right direction. What's Senator Murray's biggest problem? I mean, she's in a, obviously, Well, they didn't like the federal controls. employees. They didn't like uh, the idea that we are going to ask uh, federal employees to pay more for their pensions. Is Congressman Van Hollen, who's a, a big, he's, he's, a, he's got a lot of federal employees. He's a big mover and shaker in, in the he House. Is. So what about his, he's he got is, a lot uh, of he, federal employees. He had a hand in how we did this. Uh, I was willing to negotiate on how we treated federal employees uh, not if we made them pay more for their pensions. So he had a very substantial involvement in how this policy works. What we basically want to do is make sure that federal employees have their benefits more in line with the hardworking taxpayers that pay for them. This is something we dealt with in Wisconsin. States are dealing with this all over the country. We really think it's time we deal with this at the federal level. I didn't get every policy I wanted on this, um, but, but we've got a substantial down payment on this I, problem. I, and Senator I, and Congressman Van Hollen was a part of that. I actually think that the certainty is such an important element to this. I mean, no one ever gets what he or she wants in this right. stuff. But the biz, the certainty, I think, is so important for our economy, for the stability, so that, you know, even any time we get everybody at least to give it a shot, you know, that that helps. Yeah, I think this, the idea of a government shutdown in January and then the idea of another possible government shutdown in October 
and getting rid of that, I think, is good. Except there, it gives me a lot, a lot of shows for me to, to jump all over you guys. Yeah, but I think there are a lot of people who would like the distraction of government shutdown for one reason or another. Uh, I think I think the administration is not really high on the Obamacare focus that, that is occurring in this country because it's the like completely the unraveling. Do you think they like the shutdown? Well, I don't know. if they. I wouldn't say that they like shutdowns, but I think they'd like to get off Obamacare. And, and by not shutting the government down, we're not going to get off Obamacare. We're going to keep doing our oversight. We're going to keep speaking truth to power. We're going to keep um, doing... Sun is shining the light on these problems of the law, and that, to us, gives us in a, a good position. The last point I'll make is this retains the power of the purse in Congress. The legislative branch, Congress, we are supposed to set spending. We're supposed to prioritize spending. We are supposed to exercise the power of the purse. For the last three years, we've been doing these things called continuing resolutions where we delegate that power to the executive branch. So I want Congress to reclaim that power from the administration. Doing something like this guarantees that we do that. Vote likely on Thursday? Yes. All right. Congressman, thank you, and congratulations to both you and uh, Senator Murray. Yeah, thanks, Good luck. Guy. Appreciate it.